Hello everyone. In this video I want to do three main things. First I want to test this enclosure with it oriented in different directions. So I want to have it right side up, upside down, sideways, whatever. Also I want to post what the audio from this enclosure sounds like. I've mentioned that the design of the enclosure makes a lot of wind noise or air noise and it makes the audio sound pretty bad but I did put in something to, to help that so I'll be testing that in this video. I also want to show off the enclosure a little more. I guess that's kind of always what I want to do but uh, there's a few feature the features of the enclosure that I think may not be apparent unless I actually verbalize them so I'll be doing that. Okay, so for the orientation part of the video, um, the reason I'm doing this is in the latest Edge Precision video about his GoPro enclosure, there's some discussion in the comment section about how much of a difference blowing the air upward or downward would, would have, and I wanted to test it with my own enclosure just to see how it performs. Uh, with regard to the audio, if um, I'm 90% sure I've mentioned this in other videos. So the air comes in here, through there, and blows downward over the lens right there. I put this hole in here so that some of the air can either come in or out of the chamber of the enclosure. And I find that that mitigates the condensation that can form on the glass of the, of the uh, lens here. But I realized that the uh, inherent problem with having this hole here is there's almost a direct line between the outside and the inside of the enclosure, making this absolutely not a waterproof enclosure. It is only coolant resistant. But I figure there are going to be times when I may want to use this where there's so much water or coolant or whatever that I may want to close this up and I'll fight the condensation using a different method, some kind of a desiccant probably. Or during short periods, it doesn't matter that much. So for a lot of the video from the, uh, the portions of the video that are shot from this camera, we'll have audio from the mics inside this camera so that you can hear what what it sounds like with this plugged up. I'll probably put in a small sample of what it sounds like with it not plugged, but like I said, uh, or maybe I said it, I don't know, but it's basically noise, so it's, it doesn't sound good. So I'll make that, that uh, clip short. And as always, I want to show off the enclosure a little bit. In the uh, end of the video, I'll just go over the dimensions a little bit. But before that, I want to point out that the rectangular shape of this actually is by design. You know, if it was all organic looking and flowing and stuff, that would certainly look cooler. But this rectangular shape uh, func actually serves a purpose and I think uh, form should follow function. So what does it do for you? Basically, it lets you set the enclosure down in normal vices and clamps and stuff. So like if you're using this enclosure, let's say even without an airline, you can just set it on a table. You put it up this way. You can put it upside down, you know, whatever you're into. And likewise, if you want to clamp it down, you can clamp it down in all those orientations using normal clamps, which is kind of nice. So, um, I'll get this set up and uh, get it rolling.
I decided to do the end of this video with a backdrop of all my prototypes and then I got some fixtures and spare parts and stuff that I've made while I was working on this project. I guess I just kind of wanted to show that I didn't get to this thing in one step. It didn't spring out of thin air. This was a very iterative process. I guess uh, I could have shown these things while I was working on them, but I'm uh, sort of a secretive person, so I didn't. Uh, I've even got some of the other things that I've anodized here that actually came out better than the, the last thing I tried to anodize. Oh, actually, it's the second to last. No, the last thing came out great. But I could go on and on and on about all these things. So I'm going to restrain myself and just do what I said I was going to do, which is give the dimensions of this thing. There's a whole lot of other information about the enclosure in a video that I'll link to in a card in the corner. But for clarity, I'll repeat that I have three case designs, one for each of these three styles of action camera. One for the GoPro Heroes 3 and 4, one for the GoPro Heroes 5 and 6, and one for the Xiaomi Yi 4K Plus. And my understanding is the 4K is the same size. All the enclosures are the same height and width. The height is 56.75 millimeters. That's roughly two and a quarter inches, a little tiny bit less. The width is 78 millimeters. That's a little more than three inches. And the length from camera to camera varies by one or two millimeters, or let's say a sixteenth of an inch or so but the length is somewhere in the neighborhood of 52 millimeters, which is a little more than two inches. And that's including these thumb screws, which are eight millimeters tall, which is roughly five sixteenths of an inch. From the outside, they all look very similar. The biggest differences are gonna be the lens placement, and that dictates where the air comes in and where the tripod mount is. The tripod mount is directly below the center of the lens so that if you have it mounted that way and you rotate it, it'll rotate about the, the lens instead of some random place, you know, in the center of the camera. Otherwise, the number of buttons is the biggest differentiating feature. The GoPro Heroes 3 and 4 have three buttons. The Heroes 5 and 6 have two buttons, and the Xiaomi cameras only have a single button. Cool. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tests. Um, I'll see you guys later.